Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Super Earths and escaping those Super Earths using traditional rockets. We're going to be focusing on the fact that our Earth is just perfect in allowing us to actually travel in space and to escape the Earth using rockets and we're going to talk about other planets that are not as lucky. Welcome to What The Math. So this is actually based on a study uh, by several scientists and specifically there's this one person by the name of Dr. Hipke who studied various uh, super earths and published a paper that discussed how a lot of super earths out there, if they have any aliens in them, will actually prevent those aliens from achieving spaceflight. And the idea is really simple. It's based on the fact that for a typical chemical rocket to work, uh, you actually have to uh, basically be able to escape the Earth gravity. And uh, for this to happen, you need to be able to uh, use chemical reactions to produce enough thrust. And if the gravity of Earth was higher, or I guess significantly higher, it would be very, very difficult for us to achieve that space flight. Now, there's actually a lot of things you can find online that give you a little bit of more mathematical approach to this. But just to kind of give you an idea, it's really not about the gravity itself, but it's about the density of the planet related to um, its escape velocity. So here I decided to place three identical in mass Earths. Each of these Earth planets is actually one mass of Earth. But as you can see, their size is different because their density is different. This one, the smaller one, is made up of really, really dense materials, probably some really heavy metals. Um, iron and lead and a lot of other stuff like um, uranium, iridium and a lot of other stuff that's even more dense. The one in the middle is our, our own Earth and the one on the right is very, very, very light in terms of uh, density because it's basically made out of water. It's one gram per centimeter cube, which is the density of water. So it's kind of made up of ice. So this is an ice planet. But despite the fact that they all have the same mass, their escape velocity is going to be different. For the typical Earth, the escape velocity is um, somewhere right here, 11.2 kilometers per second. This means that you have to achieve 11.2 kilometers per second for you to escape the gravitational pull of the planet. To achieve orbit around the planet, you only need about 8 kilometers per second. Uh, but this is the number we're going to be looking at. And the surface gravity here is 9.82 meters per second squared. Simply based on the visual observation, you would assume that this one would probably have more. But it just so happens that not only does this planet has about three times less surface gravity, but it also has a slightly lower escape uh, velocity of 8.42 uh, kilometers per second. In other words, an Earth-like planet with lesser density is going to have a much lesser escape velocity and is going to be easier for us to escape it. And that also implies that aliens living on such planets will have easier time getting to space. On the other hand, the smaller Earth with a surface gravity three times higher, 33, km, uh, 33 meters per, se uh, per second square, has an escape velocity of 15.2 kilometers per second. And here, this is where an alien species will probably have tremendous difficulty escaping uh, into space. It's almost going to be impossible unless they come up with some really crazy technology. Now, it really all relates to the surface gravity value. Or I guess you can also refer to this as G. So at 10 G, the amount of energy you have to produce to escape even with the smallest rocket is going to be basically equivalent to an actual part of the planet itself. If you actually do the math behind this, you will discover that approximately a fifth of the planet in mass is required for you to basically place uh, just one ton of mass in, into orbit at 10 surface gravities. Anything below 5 is maybe possible, but anything above 5 is still almost impossible. So at 3.3 Gs, it's already very, very difficult. At something like 3 Gs, you'd probably require um, 
anywhere between 17 to possibly even 100 stages for your rocket. You also need uh, 274 engines at least to make it work. And you would require a rocket that's about 50,000 uh, tons of mass. And as you can see, my planets are now colliding into each other because I actually just placed them relatively close to each other. And here they go, they just hold each other. So what does this all mean? Well, it basically means two things. One is that it's very, very tricky for us to assume that certain Earth-like planets would be easy to escape with uh, chemical rockets. And two is that it's really not so much the actual size of the planet that matters, but it's really the density and the mass. So here, let's just create a new simulation and place a few of the um, relatively recently discovered planets here. We're going to place Earth, we're going to place Core at 7b, uh, Kepler 10b, these are all super Earths, uh, Kepler 62e, 62f, and uh, Proxima b, our closest neighbor. And also, just for fun, let's maybe place hypothetical planet 9. So just looking at these, you might make some assumptions at which one will have the high surface gravity simply based on its look. But you'll be surprised what you discover. So remember, this is 11.2. Planet 9, which has the mass of 10 Earths, um, also has a very, very low density, which also implies that its um, escape velocity is 19.1 kilometers per second and the surface gravity is actually lower than Earth. So here, it's really the size that makes it harder to escape, not so much the mass. Uh, Proxima b, the closest neighbor to us, has a slightly higher escape velocity and slightly higher surface gravity, but um, in terms of the actual density, it's relatively similar to Earth, and it's just bigger in mass and in radius, so thus it would have slightly higher escape velocity. Uh, Kepler-10b here is actually... 16.6 um, .6 in terms of escape velocity, so it's about 150% uh, higher, and 150% higher for its surface gravity. And this planet is 3.2 masses of Earth, and is about uh, maybe 150% the size of Earth. And then we'll look at the smaller planets here, and all of these have both smaller mass, slightly smaller mass, so this is about 64% of mass of Earth, but also smaller density. And so for these planets, the actual escape velocity is also going to be slightly lower. So there's half surface gravity and about uh, 8 kilometers per second escape velocity compared to 11 on Earth. This one here has about 9. If I place a planet like Mercury, which is, uh, or I guess let's place two, Mercury and Mars, which are smaller than Earth, their surface uh, gravity is significantly less than Earth, about three times a little less. And their escape velocity is 4.2 kilometers per second and 5 kilometers per second. So it's a very interesting sort of phenomenon. It's a very interesting concept where you can't just judge the planet by its size or its mass alone. You really need to look at the actual density of the planet and also its mass to establish, uh, well, first surface gravity, but also escape velocity based on that. Now, atmosphere can also have some influence, but not as much as the actual surface gravity. So really, it's the Gs that matter. The amount of Gs on a, on a planet, which are usually based on the mass and the density, will determine um, the actual escape velocity. Just for fun, let's take a look at some of the bigger planets in our own solar system, specifically Jupiter, and Saturn. These are actually very interesting to take a look at because despite their size, specifically despite the size of Saturn, the surface G here is very close to Earth. As a matter of fact, the surface gravity is just a little bit higher than Earth, but escape velocity is about three times or over three times higher. And why is that? Well, it's really just because of its actual size at this point. Because it's so much bigger than Earth, you actually have to uh, move a lot faster to escape this planet. So here the situation is a little bit different. And what's interesting about Saturn is that it also spins very fast, and so uh, its velocity right here on the equator is actually 
almost 9 kilometers per second. Or actually, I believe it's even higher than 9 kilometers per second. So that means is if you were to fly along the equator, you could technically get into orbit of Saturn relatively easy if you were to just accelerate a little bit more. You wouldn't be able to escape it that easy, but you would be able to get into orbit. Uh, it's a very similar situation with Jupiter, but the surface gravity here is about 2.5 times higher than Earth. And at the same time, the escape velocity is dramatically higher. It's about 59 to 60 kilometers per second. So here, this is this would be very difficult to escape with a chemical rocket. Practically impossible, actually. Um, and despite the fact that the actual equatorial velocity is higher than Saturn, it's actually something like 15 to 20 kilometers per second, you would still not really be able to get into orbit easy because you need to have a much higher velocity to try to escape the planet. So lots of different factors when it comes to escaping these planets. But the main idea is that one, Earth is very lucky, is that it's kind of at the limit where chemical rockets still work. And two is that if we actually want to find a planet that might be sort of easy for us to escape, if we land on it, we need to really take a look at uh, some other details, specifically the density and the Gs. And we also need to establish the size of the planet as well. So a few factors that we need to take a look at before we can consider the planet to be escapable or not escapable. Now, all of this kind of implies one thing. We need to first start looking for planets that have lesser density than Earth and possibly size of about 1 to 1.5 radii of Earth uh, for initial exploration. Until we discover better engines, we won't be able to escape most of the other planets uh, that are called super Earths because the Gs on the surface are going to be too, too high. Even Proxima B, that's our, basically our nearest neighbor, has the escape velocity that's already kind of pushing our limits. It's higher than Earth, and if it has any atmosphere on the surface, it's going to be very difficult for us to deliver payload and then to try to escape from here unless we find a way to basically construct some sort of a fuel production system. And because it has higher surface gravity and higher escape velocity, it also implies that we basically need to have more stages for our rocket than we did when we escaped from Earth. So there's a lot of problems for us to consider if we actually get into this whole space exploration and colonization thing. Well, for now, that's all I wanted to mention in this video, because there's a lot more to mention about all of these topics. And actually, uh, Scott Manley made a really good video where he demonstrated how difficult it is to escape from these planets using Kerbal Space Program. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else. We're going to talk about something that you may have not known before. And do consider subscribing or supporting this channel on Patreon if you still haven't. Space out, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.